Today on the newscast, a stunning new archaeological find in Israel dating back to the early Bronze Age. In Israel, a group of skeptics started a bold journey. They weren't believers, but they were eager to find out more about ancient beliefs. With their focus on truth and using logic, they aimed to understand history and religion better, not to prove them wrong. As they explored, they stumbled upon the Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem. Are we on the verge of uncovering an unusual revelation following the excavation of this newfound discovery? Join us in this video to challenge everything you thought you knew about the discovery in Israel. Digging up and exploring the Pool of Siloam was a huge deal for people who study old things. It made the stories from a long time ago come to life and helped us understand them better. The Israeli Antiquities Authority led the way in digging up this pool that hadn't been fully explored before. They wanted to uncover the whole pool, not just parts that people already knew about. As they dug, people got to see this amazing discovery happen. The pool was super important in stories from both the Old and New Testaments, connecting deeply with religious stories and history. So what is shocking about this discovery? The Pool of Siloam was built over 2,700 years ago by King Hezekiah, and it was more than just a water source. It was part of how Jerusalem got its water, and it meant a lot more than just that to people because of stories in the Bible. This excavation wasn't just about finding an old pool. It was like touching history that means so much to millions of people. The pool is linked to stories in the Bible, especially the one about Jesus healing a blind man, and that got everyone really excited. The Israeli Antiquities Authority did a super careful job digging up the Pool of Siloam. People didn't just watch history. They were part of it as they saw the digging happen right in front of them. This old pool was in the Jerusalem Walls National Park and meant a lot to people from all around the world. As the digging continued, archaeologists found more than just stones and water. They found stories written in time that showed how faith, history, and people all connect. The Pool of Siloam wasn't just an old thing. It was proof of really smart ancient builders. It's been around for more than 150 years and was super important in stories from the Bible. The Pool of Siloam is located in the Palestinian village of Silwan, just outside the perimeter of the old city of Jerusalem. It is entirely man-made, having been constructed during the reign of the Israelite King Hezekiah in the 8th century BC. When it was in use, the Pool of Siloam was fed by the waters of the Gihon Spring, which were transported to the reservoir through the fortified Siloam Tunnel. Hezekiah was known for financing an array of infrastructure construction projects during his time as the leader of the Kingdom of Judah, and he was especially determined to maintain Jerusalem's access to fresh water supplies, should they be attacked by Judah's enemies, most notably the Assyrians. The Pool of Siloam was built within the city limits of the original Jerusalem as a protected site that would not be vulnerable to seizure by outside invaders. The water in the Pool of Siloam was not reserved exclusively for drinking. The pool was used for religious ceremonies and ritual purification, beginning in Hezekiah's time and continuing up through the Second Temple period, 516 BC to 70 AD. Pilgrims who arrived during the latter period were encouraged to purify themselves in the pool's sacred waters before entering the holy city, which they did willingly. The Pool of Siloam construction project is specifically mentioned in the Bible. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might and how he made the pool and the conduit and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? The Bible asks rhetorically, in passage 2020 from the Book of Kings 2. This is not the only written confirmation that establishes Hezekiah's role in building the famed pool. In 1880, archaeologists exploring the site unearthed an inscription in ancient Hebrew that basically told the same story as the biblical reference. It described how the Siloam tunnel and pool were constructed, once again dating these acts to the reign of the legendary King Hezekiah. This inscription is believed to have been made at the time the project was completed, and it is currently on display at the Istanbul Archaeology Museum in Turkey, although talks are underway that could result in it being returned to the Israeli cultural authorities. Will the Pool of Siloam excavations be controversial? The steps leading down to the Pool of Siloam were fully excavated for the first time in the 1960s by British archaeologist Kathleen Kenyon, 
She performed her work at a location that had actually been discovered in the 1890s by a group of British and American archaeologists who visited the site and uncovered a few of the pool's steps. Over the years, other parts of the area around the pool have been excavated by archaeologists from around the world, but the new project will focus on fully exposing the entire pool, which up to now has remained mostly hidden. Only the northern perimeter and small section of the eastern perimeter of the pool have been exposed so far, as a result of excavations carried out in 2004. In total, the pool is estimated to cover about 1.25 acres, or one half of one hectare of space. The site of the excavated pool will be added to a pilgrim's route that begins at the edge of the western wall and terminates at the southern border of the city of David's site, which is considered to be the earliest Jewish settlement in Jerusalem. Notably, much of this territory is within the current borders of the Palestinian village of Silwan. It is not yet known whether Palestinians living in Silwan will be open to the new round of excavations or what type of arrangements might be made to secure their cooperation. The involvement of the City of David Foundation, which actively supports the movement of Jewish-Israeli settlers into Palestinian-occupied neighborhoods, may make it difficult to negotiate any type of agreement but it seems the project will be carried out regardless of any objections that might be raised. The IAA announcement didn't specify when the excavations would be complete, but the City of David Foundation did say the site would be open to the public throughout the process, starting immediately. In 2019, an excavation in the City of David revealed the Pilgrim's Road, an ancient route stretching from the Pool of Siloam near the southern part of the city to the western wall by the Temple Mount. This road holds historical significance for the Jewish community, serving as a pathway for millions of pilgrims heading to the temple during important religious holidays. However, the project faces political complexities as a significant part of this area falls within the present boundaries of the Palestinian village of Silwan, home to around 40,000 people. The Pilgrimage Road, a broad pathway made of substantial stone paving slabs, was a crucial route for worshippers traveling from the Pool of Siloam to the Temple. Excavations began at the pool and progressed uphill, uncovering a hidden stairway underneath the lively Silwan neighborhood. Archaeologists encountered challenges digging beneath modern streets and houses, necessitating the installation of steel support beams to strengthen the ceiling. Despite these obstacles, the discovery of the Pilgrimage Road marks a significant archaeological achievement with deep biblical significance. The excavation utilized modern technology like fiber optic cable cameras to identify excavation sites and historical maps and diagrams to guide the process. The Pool of Siloam has a rich history spanning over 150 years, notably marked by the discovery of the Siloam inscription in 1880 which detailed the construction of the Siloam Tunnel. This tunnel played a crucial role in supplying water from the Gihon Spring to the Pool of Siloam, showcasing exceptional ancient engineering skills. Named after King Hezekiah, the Siloam Tunnel is significant in both Jewish and Christian traditions. Its religious importance extends to the association with a notable Christian miracle near the pool. Beyond its spiritual value, the tunnel stands as an engineering marvel measuring approximately 533 meters and showcasing the skill of ancient craftsmen who meticulously carved it from solid rock. Excavations in the late 19th and early 20th centuries by various archaeologists, including F.J. Bliss, D.G.A. Dickey, and Kathleen Kenyon, uncovered parts of the Pool of Siloam steps, adding to the historical narrative of this significant site. The tunnel also bears ancient inscriptions known as the Siloam Writing, providing insight into the language and history of its time. The Siloam Tunnel inscription, discovered in 1880, narrates a dramatic moment in Jerusalem's history. Fearing that the city would soon be under siege, residents thousands of years ago undertook a project that would bring water from a source outside the city walls into the city. The inscription, chiseled into the wall of a tunnel, called Hezekiah's Tunnel, tells how two crews of workmen tunneled through bedrock, one started at the Gihon Spring outside of the city. The other crew started from inside the city walls, sometimes following natural fissures in the rock rather than always hewing through the stone, which accounts for the somewhat winding nature of the tunnel. The two crews finally met. According to the inscription, the total length of the tunnel was around 1,200 cubits, 
At about 18 inches per cubit, the total length was nearly 1,800 feet. Modern measurements confirm that the tunnel is indeed almost 1,800 feet long. At one point, the inscription states that the height of the ceiling is about 100 cubits, or 150 feet. Although there are places where the ceiling is about this high, there are also many places where it is less than six feet high. The inscription does not mention the breadth of the tunnel, but it is usually at least shoulder width. Shortly after its discovery, the inscription was chiseled out and removed with some resulting damage. Because its discovery and removal occurred during the Ottoman period, it was sent to Istanbul. It remains in the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. However, many have wondered if Hezekiah's tunnel was actually dug by Hezekiah at the end of the 8th century BCE, Iron Age II. The first argument for redating the tunnel concerns the Siloam inscription. Found at the southern end of Hezekiah's tunnel, the Siloam inscription recounts how the men digging the tunnel worked in two directions, one from the north, the other from the south, and met in the middle. The Siloam inscription does not name Hezekiah or Sennacherib I, the Sennacherib in the Bible, which would simplify matters. While most scholars attribute the Siloam inscription to the Iron Age II, John Rogerson and Philip Davies argue that it is actually Hasmonean, which raises the question, which period is a better fit for the Siloam inscription? The second argument concerns the amount of time it would have taken to dig Hezekiah's tunnel. Based on the type of rock in Jerusalem tunnels, geologists Amihai Sne, Ayel Shalev, and Ram Weinberger contend that Hezekiah's tunnel could have been hewn in no less than four years. Did Hezekiah have time to dig the tunnel before the arrival of Sennacherib? In the Bible, it does not specify the amount of time between the threat of attack and the siege itself, but Assyrian records shed light on the matter. The final argument hinges on the relationship of the various channels of the water system in Jerusalem. Tunnels were dug in very different periods, ranging from the Middle Bronze Age to the Second Temple period. Did you know this discovery is an important aspect to ancient miracles? Throughout history, the excavation of the Pool of Siloam has been a collaborative effort by various archaeologists. F.J. Bliss and D.G.A. Dickey, British and American archaeologists in the 1890s, discovered parts of the pool's steps. Kathleen Kenyon later conducted further excavations that unveiled more steps. In 2004, while repairing a sewage line, the Jerusalem Gihon Water Company accidentally uncovered more steps, leading to a systematic excavation by Professor Ronnie Reich and Eli Shukran. They revealed sections of the pool. Eli Shukran's involvement in 2007 resulted in a significant discovery, a tablet with an inscription mentioning King Hezekiah. Alongside Professor Gershon Galil, they deciphered the inscription, summarizing Hezekiah's reign and highlighting his achievements, including the construction of the tunnel to the Siloam Pool. These findings provide strong evidence supporting the Bible's historical authenticity. The pool, spanning 225 feet wide with steps on three sides, has been a site of ongoing exploration. Visitors now have the chance to experience its historical and architectural richness by sitting and immersing themselves in its waters. Over time, the pool underwent several construction phases, particularly during the Second Temple period, with renovations and expansions. The Pilgrim's Road leading to the pool was constructed over approximately 10 years around AD 30, under the supervision of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor infamous for crucifying Jesus. At its largest, the pool covered about 1.25 acres and served as the city's primary water source. However, there's still much work ahead to fully uncover its entirety. In Jesus' time, the pool was significant as a ritual bath, mikvah, where pilgrims purified themselves before journeying along Pilgrim's Road to the temple. It's also the setting for a well-known miracle narrated in John 9. Jesus encounters a man blind from birth and proceeds to perform an unconventional healing. He spits on the ground, forms mud with the saliva, anoints the blind man's eyes with it, and instructs him to wash in the pool of Siloam. Despite the unusual method, the blind man obeys, washes in the pool, and miraculously gains his sight. This incident holds layers of symbolism. Firstly, the use of the mud and the washing in the pool echoes the ritualistic nature of the pool itself, emphasizing the concept of cleansing and renewal. Secondly, Jesus' act signifies his authority to redefine traditional practices, 
and demonstrate divine power beyond conventional expectations. This event underscored Jesus' role as a healer and the illuminator of the world, displaying the works of God. The Pool of Siloam and Pilgrim's Road have been intertwined with complex issues of land control, religion, and historical narratives, fueling disputes between Israelis and Palestinians. Israelis claim deep historical ties to Jerusalem, while certain Palestinians dispute the Jewish connection to ancient Jerusalem, leading to ongoing conflicts and tensions. The Bethesda Pool and the Siloam Pool in Jerusalem have different stories that help us understand the miracles in the Bible better. Despite the city's complex politics, ongoing archaeological findings show how important it is to learn about our shared human history. Apart from the Siloam Pool, there are other incredible stories in the Bible like when Jesus fed 5,000 people. This event is in all four Gospels and shows how significant it was in Jesus' life. During this miracle, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish from a boy's small lunch and managed to feed a huge crowd of 5,000 people. Some scholars think with women and children there might have been 15,000 to 20,000 people there. In one part of the Bible, Matthew 14, 15, Jesus' followers were worried about the people being hungry in a far-off place as it was getting late. But Jesus told them to give the people something to eat, which must have been surprising. In Matthew 14, 18, Jesus thanked God for the food and then shared it with his followers to give to the crowd. Amazingly, there was more than enough food left, over 12 baskets full. This miracle teaches us how giving even small things can lead to amazing outcomes. It shows that God likes to use regular people and their offerings for extraordinary things, emphasizing the importance of selflessness. Philip was worried about money, but Jesus didn't need money to make this happen. He involved his followers, showing that working together is important. Even though Jesus could do anything, he made his followers help, which made them believe more in him. This story reminds Christians that God can handle big problems and uses people to do great things. Andrew, Philip, and others learned to trust the Lord for everything. They weren't sure if they had enough, but God showed them there was more than plenty. Another big miracle was when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. This showed Jesus' power and care. Martha and Mary believed Jesus could do it, and Lazarus came back to life after being dead for four days. When Jesus cried at Lazarus' grave, it showed how much he cared. And when Lazarus came out of the tomb alive, it was a truly amazing moment. This story encourages us to explore more about our shared human history and how it connects with these events. So how did the clash with Palestine come in as regards this discovery? The digging happening at the Pool of Siloam and Pilgrim's Road is causing a stir because some people think it's trying to make Jerusalem more Jewish. This makes some folks worried about the Palestinian side. The excavation of the road in Siloam Pool is in the Arab neighborhood of Silwan in East Jerusalem. Palestinians want East Jerusalem to be the capital of a future Palestinian state. Israel captured the area in 1967 and annexed it soon afterward. Much of the international community considers the territory occupied. Riyad Mansour, permanent observer of the state of Palestine to the United Nations, called the Rhodes inauguration an illegal act in occupied territory. Mansour said in a statement that Silwan has been heavily targeted by illegal Israeli settlement activities, including home demolitions, evictions, and land confiscations across the years. Palestinian officials say Jews have no historical or religious claims to the region. Israeli officials maintain that present-day Israel and the West Bank were part of the biblical land of Israel and employ archaeology to prove it. The scientists doing the digging have different opinions and get mixed up in the politics. People are arguing that the digging might have hurt homes and put lives at risk in the Muslim area above it and might have crossed into the Temple Mount area where they're not allowed but a court said there isn't enough proof for these claims. The scientists are always watching to keep everyone safe during the digging. The inauguration of the road drew strong reactions, with Riyad Mansour, the permanent observer of the state of Palestine to the United Nations, condemning it as an illegal act in occupied territory. Mansour highlighted Silwan's history of being targeted by what he termed as illegal Israeli settlement activities, citing home demolitions, evictions, and land confiscations over the years. Palestinian officials firmly reject any historical or religious claims by Jews to the region. This clash in narratives reflects the broader political tensions surrounding the area. 
Israeli officials maintain a different perspective, asserting that present-day Israel and the West Bank were part of the biblical land of Israel. They utilize archaeology to support these claims. Amidst these conflicting views, scientists involved in the excavations find themselves entangled in the political discourse. Concerns have been raised regarding potential damage to homes and safety risks in the Muslim area above the excavation site, as well as the fear of encroachment into the off-limits Temple Mount area. Despite these concerns, a court ruling cited insufficient evidence to support these claims. The scientists overseeing the excavation work are keen on ensuring safety measures are in place. However, the excavation activities continue to be a focal point in the ongoing debate over historical narratives and territorial claims, magnifying the complexities of the region's history and the contemporary political landscape. The Pool of Siloam is way more important than just what's in the Bible. It's linked to King Hezekiah and how he dealt with the danger from the Assyrians. That's making the digging even more interesting. King Hezekiah did something smart to protect his kingdom by redirecting the water from Judah through a tunnel in solid rock. But the Bible doesn't give all the details about this tunnel. Digging at the big pool of Siloam gives a special chance to find more proof that matches the stories in the Bible. Really smart people think this digging could prove that what's written in the Bible is actually what happened in history. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Stay tuned for more enlightening videos like this.